I'm going to experiment in fusion with something called generative design here. Uh, generative design you find by clicking where it says model here and in the past that's where we might, might have found simulation for FEA and we've done some sheet metal work and we've rendered and you could look at other options there. Uh, now I'm going to select generative design. So um, the idea here is that Fusion is going to do some design work for us. Uh, we tell it where we want material and where we don't want material and then it will um, come up with... Uh, I wonder if, if I hover here... No, I was hoping it might give me a graphic which kind of shows you the idea. You'll see various graphics as you work through things showing you what it's going to do. But uh, Fusion will come up with a design which kind of optimizes within what we're working with. So first of all, what we're going to do um, is there's uh, a hook design that we've worked on before. Um, if I just bring some things over from the other screen here. Um, we set up a problem that looks something like this, where you've got a constraint on top of the hook here, and then you load the hook where you would expect to load a hook um, and work out what the stress was. And we worked through problems like that. Um, and then one of the things you can do is to go away and try and strip away material and still leave the hook functional. And so now what I'm going to do is try and um, strip away material using this generative design in Fusion. Uh, so I'm going to say edit model. Uh, I'm just going to turn on my origin plane so I can see what I'm doing. Um, and what's the best way to do this? What I need to do first is to create the bits of the hook that Fusion has to start from. Um, so I'm going to start by creating an offset plane um, at 100 millimeters up. Um, and now if I sketch on that plane, and what I want to do is to create a rectangle. Uh, actually, I'll make it a center rectangle and center this on the origin. And I think it wants to be uh, 20 by 20. And then what I can do is to extrude that rectangle uh, down. I'm just going to make it minus two millimeters. Um, and then what I'm going to do uh, is that that plate effectively I'm going to say has to be a part of the hook. That that the model needs that to be in place. Um, the next thing I can do is. Uh, as well as this plate, which is kind of the fixed bit of the hook, we also want uh, here the um, the part of the hook which has to hold the load. And so to sketch that, I'm going to use some lines. Um, I guess... Uh, each of these units is 10 um, and the hook itself had a, a, a 20 millimeter um, loading point or 20 millimeters uh, across which the load was distributed. Um, what I think I'll do is start there and just sketch out like this. Um, and in fact, I'm actually going to put some fillets on here. You can play around as you like. Um, th there's no particular certainty about what this bit of the, the sketch should look like. Um, I'll just zoom out to make sure that that looks about right. I think that's fine. Um, but the important thing is that I create a zone where the load will be applied. And I'm going to make that whole thing uh, symmetric, 10 millimeters each way, and say OK. 
and now it looks like I've got a reasonably good uh, setup. So just to go back and look again at this image here, what I've drawn is first of all the, the constrained zone and then a kind of curved bit around here which is what makes this a hook. And everything else I'm saying is kind of fair game to um, get rid of if necessary. Um, the next thing, what we'll do is explain to the software or program into the software that this is constrained and this is loaded and then the software will allow us to um, uh, to run the generator generative design process but um, the other thing we have to do is tell the software where it can't connect because one obvious solution if you just want to support this region here by connecting it to this region here is to have a, a straight line between them and that's not really a hook anymore so I'm going to do one more sketch, I think, uh, again on this plane here. And now what I'm going to be saying is you can't really work in uh, this region. I'll just take this way out here. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, I, I think that's all right, actually, so that um, roughly um, what I don't want is for this to connect over the top of the hook and come around um, and sort of form a, a closed loop. The only way that it's going to work as a hook is if the general uh, structure comes down and underneath to, to this area that's got to be supported. So I'm fairly happy with that. Um, I think this will become clear as we go through anyway and you can this shape doesn't have to be exactly as I've drawn it here uh, maybe I'll put in the same uh, fillet between that and that just so that there's no overlap between the two sketches and I can stop sketch and then another thing uh, another extrusion is needed again I'm going to make it symmetric and I'm going to drag this a long way out and make it a new body. Um, and I hope it'll become clear in a second what those things are for. Um, so let's say that's okay and I'll say finish edit model. And now you'll see these two buttons here in uh, generative design. The first says preserve geometry so that means you can't cut this stuff away. So the plate that's going to be fixed at the top is preserved and that bit of the hook there is preserved. And I'll say OK. And then there's also obstacle geometry and that means you can't um, put material in that space. And you can see green means keep it. you have to have material there. Red means you can't have material there. I guess one of the things is you kind of have to use your intuition here. It's possible that now the best solution will come over the top of this obstacle geometry and uh, connect up as a closed loop again, which won't really make it a hook. I'll worry about that when the time comes. So now it's a bit like what we've done before in FEA. I have to add in some uh, constraints. So I'm going to fix that face there. And that's all I'm going to constrain. Um, and then I have to add in some loads. To do that, I'm just going to um, turn off the visibility on body 3. And the load is applied. I'm going to apply it on that face there just for convenience. Um, I'm not quite sure if I've set this up exactly the same as the um, previous task but uh, it's just for demonstration at the moment. Uh, this yellow arrow just means that the gravity is automatically being um, included. I guess that's fine. I don't think gravity is going to be a big factor here anyway, but uh, I'll leave it in. Um, okay, uh, design criteria, we can set what the objectives ought to be. So. Uh, we could minimize the mass, maximize the stiffness. In the original version of this, we'd already built in the safety factor. So I'm going to make the safety factor one. 
and our aim is to minimize the mass. And then if you wanted, you could look at um, manufacturing. You can set limits on what might be possible to manufacture. Um, so I'm leaving this unrestricted at the moment. Essentially, anything that Fusion can design, I'll assume can be manufactured, perhaps using uh, additive manufacturing. But you could uh, restrict that using this dialog box. Uh, we need some materials. And I think in general we're working in mild steel. And all I'm going to do is drag that uh, into the study. And that should work OK. Um, and then I clicked, I'll just show you again, I clicked here on the pre-check. And what it tells me is um, some components are, or some bodies are hidden. Um, so I better unhide them. And then it says, OK, the study setup has all the information required. And I get this green tick that says you're ready to solve. So now um, the software is ready to start um, trying to work out the best way to connect those two green regions without going into the red region um, to minimize the mass while supporting the load that I've specified. And if I hit generate and say generate one study. Um, I've got a, a dialog over on my other screen, which apparently I can't drag across. Oh, yes, I can. Um, so you can see it's generating uh, something here or things are happening. Um, I get this notice. Thumbnails for your outcomes will appear when they are processing. Um, and I'm just going to pause this video now while that solves because it can take um, anywhere up to um, half an hour I've seen so far. Um, so I'll pause and come back once it's solved. OK, so that completed, but it didn't really complete very successfully. Um, the suggestion is the loads are too large or the material strength is insufficient. Try modifying the study setup. So that's what we'll do. Uh, we'll go back to generative design and um, I guess maybe where I um, before had a suggested load of 3,000 Newtons. Uh, let's just try making this 1,000 and see what happens and we'll run it again. And again what I'll do is I'll pause there and uh, come back when the results are in. OK, uh, so this resumed, uh, uh, this uh, solved. Um, for some reason, I'm always getting that outcome five just immediately fails. But we've got four different outcomes here from the uh, generative design. Um, what we can do, there are a few things you can do. You know, you might suddenly decide, OK, well, I'm really interested in minimizing the volume. So you can look for the one with the smallest volume. You can do the same thing. If you use these sliders, it'll eliminate various um, um, options. I guess if I don't want very much displacement, uh, interestingly, then it's one and two that give me the best results. Um, up here, there are options. I can look at the properties for each of them. So this first one has way less uh, volume and mass than the other ones, which is kind of interesting. Um, uh, all of them have the same maximum von Mises stress because I set the target to be a safety factor of one. Um, you can look at it on a graph. Um, so this axis is well, this is mass against mass at the moment, but I guess I could do mass against max displacement. And this one has low mass and fairly low max displacement. So then I double click on that to see uh, which option it is. And you can see it's rather an elegant 
uh, design that the software has come up with. Um, one thing that I can do is to start comparing them using this button here. Um, I can in fact compare all four, which can be kind of informative, or at least look at them all together. Uh, not sure. Yeah, so there's um, all the options together. Now, um, I can also view stress plots so we can find out uh, where the maximum stresses lie. In each case it looks like there are high stresses just here at the joint so I could try to find some way to to relax that. Um, but again that's the kind of thing you can play around with and then let's say even I, I guess the advantage of uh, 2, 3 and 4 is that they're I can see roughly how I can make them. Um, one, unless I'm 3D printing, might be a bit too intricate to manufacture in any useful way. Um, but let's say I'm 3D printing, so I'm going to go with outcome one. Uh, then if I um, let's take off the stress in the model. So this, when you only look at one option, uh, you can see up there uh, the option to um, export that back into Fusion and in fact there we are. So now what I can do is click here, uh, create new design from outcome, uh, create new design And I won't wait for that to happen, but that's then how you bring it back into a model you can work with and continue to work on that. So I'll stop this video there. Um, I think that gives you a sense of how to get started uh, trying things in uh, generative design. And now my recommendation is have a go at improving your hook design from what you did before using this software. Um, and then you'll find uh, anywhere where you can clearly define your uh, constraints and your loads, you may be able to use generative design uh, to get you some nice solutions to, um, to minimize uh, or to optimize in various ways. So good luck with that.